Hi, everybody. It's Beth English, and I'm here with my friend Sergio Gomez. And today we're going to talk about how to protect your creative energy. Ooh. Hi, Beth. I love that topic. Definitely something that I haven't thought about before. Uh, kind of, uh, so I'm looking forward to see what you got for us today. Yeah, we were talking before we recorded the video, and it sounds like we both need to hear this today. That's why I'm talking about it, because over the weekend, I was really come face to face with terms of how to protect my creative energy when things really start ramping up. You know, the busier we get, the more time we need to think about how to protect our energy, how to protect our creativity. What is it that we need to do and think about in order to, you know, go through life with a sense of balance. And so I'm really excited about this topic today. That's awesome. Actually, last week I shared at the end how my website got hacked and I had to like restart off from the beginning. So yeah, perfect timing. Uh, so I have been under the stress of a new release of a series and then having to redo my website really quickly to get that up and running. So yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I know. A lot, yeah, I know a lot of us are doing a lot of big things right now. We're maybe pursuing new ventures in our business and our personal life. You know, 2021 is just around the corner. Right, right. And we're probably thinking about what do we see next for ourselves. But as we do that, I think we have to realize that anytime we try something new, when we go through and think our way through it, sometimes we overcomplicate things. And so the best way to move through it and be really aware with what's going on is to feel your way through it. And the best way to do that is by listening to your body. So that's my first point. To protect your creative energy, listen to your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And I think one can sense it, right? You can yeah. sense it when uh, something is just just overweight and uh, but the problem is like you said you know you may sense it but you don't take the time to actually listen to what your body's mm -hmm. trying to tell you and that happens to me quite often um, and uh, usually you know somebody in my family has to remind me hey you've been working too long in that computer or you know that it's time to do something else and you're like what you mean I need <laughs> to eat something I need to sleep regularly like when your body tells you what it needs, it can be really clear, but oftentimes we don't listen. And mm -hmm. I think the most important thing we can do is to listen, to do what it is that we need to do, like eat a healthy meal, sleep, go out for a walk, connect to nature, whatever it is that we need to do to step away from whatever's maybe draining our energy to refuel ourselves so that we can always be prepared to be putting out energy is a really important thing that sometimes it catches up with us and we don't realize that we're so close to burnout before yeah. it even happens. And so that's why I think being attuned to what your body is telling you is going to help you stay as far away from burnout as possible. Yes, exactly. And the replenishment process, it looks different from, you know, from everyone, right? For some people might be just connecting with your loved ones or getting a nice sun in the morning, right? Those, mm -hmm. those different things. Or it can vary also depending on the seasons in life that you've been. Like this morning, I actually, I decided to, I, it was such a nice, beautiful, sunny day. It was cold, but it was sunny. I actually was working next to the window just so that I would get the sunlight. And just that itself, just kind of like ah, rejuvenated my energy for the day. I love that. And that brings me to my second point. And that's just to make a list of all the activities that you enjoy the way that they make mm. you feel mm -hmm. so that whenever you do start to feel low on energy, you can ask yourself, well, what is it that I need to do now? And you already have a plan in place for things to go and do to turn that around. Whether you have an hour or five minutes, you need to have a list of activities you know you can go to, like your go-to list anytime you're starting to feel drained so that you can sort of rejuvenize yourself just like that. Yeah. So Beth, what are some of the things that you like to do? Maybe we can share one of the things that we <laughs> like to do. <laughs> what do you well, like if, to do? Too, in well, the if, you follow me on, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm always outside. I'm always kayaking. I am I'm trying to awaken my senses with what the birds are saying, what the trees are doing, mm. what the leaves are doing. I mean, there's deer everywhere that I live. So I'm just really trying to tune into nature. And that really gives me like a sense of calm and a sense of peace. And it sort of relaxes me in a way that allows me to be open and to connect mm. to whatever intuition I feel like I'm sensing or my body's needs or my emotional needs. I feel like that openness that I create for myself allows for me to like be in a state of flow. Mm. Yeah. What about I, you? I love that. Well, I wish I had like 
you know, all this beautiful nature around me, <laughs> not that close to my house. So uh, things that I love to do, particularly now that since there's not a whole lot of things to do outside is I like to play with my dog. Like sometimes I'm working in the studio or something. And it's funny because sometimes the dog reminds me, comes and starts barking at me with the toy. It's like, okay, time for a little break. So we go out, we chase each other in the living room around and uh, play tug of war. And just after that release of energy, <laughs> mm-hmm. it helps both the dog and I to kind of like, okay, let's go back and she will go back to sleep. I'll go back to work. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, anytime you do activities that you really enjoy, your brain naturally releases hormones that are going to mm-hmm. make you feel like you're in a better mood. So it's yeah. not just like go have fun and, and feel it. It's like biological. Your brain right. will be supporting you with the way that it functions as well. So the way I like to ask myself this question is I fill in the blank and I say, I really like the way I feel after dot, dot, dot. And I just like like ponder on that. And Mm -hmm. then it gives me sort of a good prompt to go and then take that action, which is the next step. Mm -hmm. Go take action and then repeat. Anytime your body's telling you something it needs, ask yourself what you need to do next, go and do it and then do that all the time. And then you should be protecting your creative energy easily just like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And it's particularly the days that are the stressful days. You know, I find that those are the hardest days for me to take the time to go and play with a dog or do something that rejuvenates me, right? It's usually those hectic days when the, uh, the amount of things to do are really hectic and heavy that I'm most likely to ignore what my body's telling me, you know, what you said, mm-hmm. your step one, and, uh, and just push through it. But then what happens is at the end of the day, then I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm not in the greatest mood because I didn't listen, right? And I didn't take the time and I didn't uh, take the action, you know, as you point out in number three uh, to do. So particularly for me, like Fridays, Fridays I run numbers for like, or gallery. So that's when I do all our accounting and things for the gallery, payments and all the stuff. And I dread, you know, to run numbers. You know, I'm always afraid I'm gonna mess up. So I gotta count like three, four times. So those are stressful days that if the dog comes and like wants to play, I'm like, no, no, I don't want to play right now. Go away. Uh, but I think I need to listen a little bit more. Maybe if I play a little bit with the dog on a Friday morning as I'm running my numbers, maybe actually I, I'll enjoy it better. <laughs> Yeah, it's all about creating that balance and knowing ahead of time when you're going to have to do something that drains your energy to have an activity or something like intentionally set up to do to offset it, I think is a really smart way to create that balance. You have to have a plan in place ahead of time though, because otherwise we'll just keep giving, 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 you know, if you Mm -hmm. have something hard you need to do, it's all about how do I fix this? How do I fix this? And then we sort of like, just sort of become controlling over it. And when we get into that state, then we're not going to create flow at all. And Uh. so I think it's really important to know like where you are in your energy and just being aware of it and just asking yourself how you feel that will help give you some sort of gauge as to what it is you need to do next. I, I love that, you know, and I think of this conversation, I really love uh, that idea of uh, making an inventory or a list of the things that, why you feel when you do certain things, the enjoyment of it. And I think if we have that as a, as a list, a visual, you know, reminder, oh, I can do that right now. You know, if it only takes three minutes or this sort of activity, maybe it takes 10 minutes or, mm-hmm. you know, I think that is really great because, yeah, you know, on a busy day, you may not have time to go do something really extensive, but maybe you got those three, four minutes that can change the, the rest of the day. I love that. You know, that's great advice. Thank you. You're welcome. And you can learn more about this because I am so excited to announce that I'll be launching a new program. It's a 12 month program. And it involves a self-study course as as well as group coaching. And it's teaching people how to self-heal their pain so that they can feel joy again. And energy is just one little piece of that. But I do have a four-step framework that I teach. And I'll be doing a master class um, maybe in December or early January. And I'm just thrilled to be able to put all of this content together and start offering it to people because the knowledge that we need to be able to self heal and to be able to navigate through our pain and live life with joy is really not as complicated as people may seem, but it's not something that we talk about very much or are taught as children. And so I just can't wait to share everything that I've learned over the years about how to self heal pain and live with a life full of joy. So be on the lookout for that. I love that. Thank you so much. But I think it's going to be very exciting. We can wait to, uh, you know, to your launch of that program. I know you've been working really hard on it. So uh, I can't wait to see it. 
which is why I needed to do this topic <laughs> today because I, I've been working way too hard and I burnt myself out and I really need to take a step back and walk the talk, right? And yeah. just go through what it is that I do, self-coach myself, get back right. to a place of balance and then talk about it because I think that's how we grow is having these great conversations. So Totally, totally agree. Love it, love it. Well, thank you guys for watching. You know, we're here every Wednesday sharing with you. And I would love for you, Sergio, to tell our friends how they can follow you online. Yeah, super easy. You can follow me online at Sergio Gomez R. That's my Instagram name. And uh, also you can find me on my website at SergioGomezOnline.com. Wait a minute. I think I said it wrong. And my website is SergioGomezOnline.com. Uh, and my social media is Sergio Gomez R. I think that's, uh, that's the right one. <laughs> well, I'm going to tag you in this post anyway. So our friends yeah, there you go. find you easily. I, I think I need one of those little three minutes right, right now. Uh, uh, <laughs> things that can make me feel uh, back again in, in one place. <laughs> to refocus. <laughs> right <after> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll just do that after the video is done. But you guys can also follow me online on Facebook and Instagram at Beth English and at BethEnglish.com. And I can't wait to chat with you and uh, hear what it is that you do that makes you feel really good. Leave it in the comments and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, babe. Bye.